earlier this morning, a bunch of news outlets posted articles going over their experience with their hands-on demo of Red Dead Redemption 2. And in this video, I want to talk about 10 awesome things that we learned from all of those hands-on previews. Now, there was way more than just 10, and over the next couple of days, I will be making videos going into detail and specifics on certain things like hunting and horses, because there was way more information on those things than some of the stuff I'm going to talk about in this video. But without further ado, this is 10 awesome things that we learned. The first, you can play the game completely in first person. You have three different levels of zoom on third person, and then you have the first person camera. Also, you have a couple of options with the first person mode, such as removing the head of the horse you're riding for a less obstructed view. So you can customize a lot to get your perfect experience. There's also, speaking of cameras, a new sort of cinematic camera. It's kind of the same as it was in GTA 5, but they tweaked it and it's a lot better now. It will now automatically trigger in certain instances, like the long journey to a mission's location, and will frame the journey with a montage of shots that emphasize the landscape and traveling of the group. You can break out of it at any time, so it's no big deal, but while you are in the cinematic mode, if you hold X, Arthur will ride at the same pace of the people you are near. The second thing, according to a bunch of the articles, the game's map is going to be bigger than GTA 5's map. And GTA 5's map was the biggest map Rockstar's ever made. This game is going to be even bigger. We don't know how much bigger. We don't know if it's a lot or if it's just a little, but it will be bigger. And it'll also be more in depth. That's what a lot of people said like the interiors and stuff, we get a lot of those in Red Dead 2 compared to not really getting anything in GTA 5. Also, speaking of the map, New Austin was confirmed. We kind of knew that through some of the teases Rockstar have posted, but people did confirm New Austin is on the map. One of the most exciting features to me is the weather. So a lot of the people that got the hands-on preview did say the weather was amazing. They said that snow is completely physically simulated into the game world. So wind blows it off of trees and horses or onto trees, horses, and people. And Rockstar actually insisted that each tree is placed individually around the map. So that's kind of cool. But weather and snow will accumulate naturally in places that haven't been trodden over. Snow will also fall off of trees. Some missions will take you far up into the mountains where you were literally above the cloud line, aka the game's weather system. That'll be really cool to see. And because the game takes place before light pollution became a thing, the sky at nighttime is riddled with stars and clusters of stars. Someone said it looked like a genuine array of galaxies when you look up at night. The fourth thing, if you were worried about this, gore. It is back. A Rockstar developer told one of the people there that shotguns will actually blow people's arms off. I cannot wait to see that happen. But they also mentioned that faces will get deformed from fist fights. So little gore in that aspect. When you get into a fight and you have a, a cut across your face, that's going to stay there until, you know, maybe a couple of weeks later. So you gotta be careful when you're getting into fights. One of the biggest things, you can actually drive the train. I know we all wanted that in GTA 5, but you can do so in Red Dead 2. Some of the options when you are in the main train car include an accelerate option, a brake option, ringing the bell, and a whistle. So that'll be cool to see what exactly we can do, where exactly we can go on the train, but we can actually drive it. Another thing which really stood out to me was that you can inspect everything. So switching to first person, you can make Arthur manipulate the object in his hands as he takes a close look at it. And in a store, for example, items could be examined and purchased off of the shelf individually or via a catalog 
at the front counter. And this is actually how you will interact with the environmental narrative objects, such as notes and photographs. Basically, when you don't have a weapon equipped, you hit LT, and that's what sort of zooms in or you know inspects whatever you're looking at. And you can also, one of the cooler parts, inspect your weapons, which is great for appreciating any customizations you have made to them. And people said there were quite a few customizations that you could make. At number seven, hunting. Apparently hunting is actually the main source of income. You also have other ways to make money such as heists and robberies, but hunting is your main source. And many new recipes and crafting options will appear in the game and unlock as you progress and get better at hunting. And in Red Dead Redemption 2, unlike Red Dead Redemption 1, the skinning animation focuses on the animal. So it's going to get pretty gruesome. Some people said that they almost had a look away because of how gruesome it was getting. So that may actually stop a lot of people from fully getting into hunting because you have to watch that every single time. But in RDR2, they said you will see Arthur pull out his knife, he'll get on his hands and knees, he'll plunge the knife into the dead animal, then he'll carve the pelt from its flesh, peel it off the body, and roll it up into a bundle. And then if you want to actually use meat from the animal, you have to bring the entire carcass back into the town to a butcher to get the meat. I'll go more over hunting in a separate video because there was a lot more, that's the basics of it, but hunting sounds awesome. And another thing I'll be making a separate video on because there's a ton of info on this, horses. Horses, they say the bond with them is super important because you can actually unlock additional skills and improve their responsiveness when you bond. And you can actually bond with multiple horses, which is good news, and then stable them in different locations around the world. So you can have different horses for different jobs. And Arthur, because he's a person, and this game is somewhat realistic, he can only carry a limited amount of weapons. He can carry two pistols and a rifle. And that's where your horse comes into play because your horse acts as your storage. And your horse can carry, I think they said it was an unlimited amount. Your horse is basically an endless supply of storage. And as long as you're in close proximity to your horse, the game will give you access to your entire inventory. Now at number nine, we have time. And the fact that it actually progresses. We did know about this already, but some of the examples they gave and some more information they gave, this stuff just sounds amazing. So Arthur's hair, for instance, it will grow longer over time. And you are actually allowed to cut things shorter. And they said with the beard, you can actually specify which parts of the beard you can cut shorter. So you can make a pretty custom beard, which sounds cool. But since it's realistic, if you cut stuff too short, you won't have access to anything that requires longer hair. So you gotta make sure you want whatever you're doing or you're gonna have to wait for your hair to grow back. Although they did say that there are some special tonics that you can take to have your hair grow back faster. And then another thing they mentioned regarding the progression of time, they said they noticed a half constructed building in one of the towns. And they were told that eventually these would become new storefronts as days passed. So buildings will get made over time. That sounds awesome. And then the final thing that I think is awesome, the honor system. In this game, the honor system is back. And if you're good, you'll get more money from bounties and NPCs will treat you better. And your kill cams will actually be more heroic because yes, kill cams are back. But if you are bad, you can actually earn more money from robberies and your kill cams will be more gruesome so as far as replayability, you have some real good reasons to replay the story because maybe one time you want to be honorable so you get to see what that's like and then the next time you want to be really bad to see what that's like. But I think a mix will be really nice and the honor system sounds like it has been really well made. 
But there you guys have it. That is 10 awesome things that we learned from the hands-on preview. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're new around here so you don't miss out on any other Red Dead Redemption 2 info. Thank you all for watching. Please drop a video like if you did enjoy. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.